okay, I'm going to take it. That's my cue to go ahead and welcome everyone and start the meeting. So for those of you that I have not met, I'm Kim Freeman. I'm the Assistant Director to Homeownership Programs here at Oregon Housing. Welcome virtually to our quarterly partner call. Um, and for those of you that are new to joining us for the first time, I will let you introduce yourself shortly, but we do have these calls quarterly. Um, the, our dates are listed on the bottom of the agenda. They do go out through our um, constant contact. So please sign up for e-news. Most of you I'm sure have done that. But you, if you have not, please do that. That is, uh, information is located on the OHCS main web page and it's up on the top um, right hand corner and it'll say e-news and then you can fill out your information. And then you can select as many opportunities as you like to receive information about the agency. So it could be about home ownership news, it could be our director's message, procurement opportunities, affordable rental housing information, anything that you would love to have um, about our agency, it is there for you to have as well. For those joining too, if you would like to put your name and name and agency in the chat, we would love to see that as well. And um, Talia has added to the link to the join us in the chat box as well. So um, I would like to have those of you that this is your first time joining one of our uh, quarterly partner calls, if you could take yourself off mute and please introduce yourself. I'll go first, maybe. Uh, I'm Wendy Trapp. I'm new to this group and new to the Housing Authority of Clackamas County, actually. I've been there since December, so I've seen a few of you on, on multiple other calls, so great to see you and, and excited to keep working on this work. I'm Sarah Radcliffe with Habitat for Humanity, Portland region. And I believe that I attended one of these when I had just barely started in my position, but I was really just getting my footing. So I'm not quite sure whether I've been to one of these or not, but nice to be here today and see you all. I'm Brad Hubbard with a company called SLS and I'm just interested in potential procurement opportunities. Nice to meet y'all. Hi there, my name is Desi Bellamy. I'm with the Portland Housing Bureau. I'm the Housing Portfolio Finance Coordinator. And uh, this is my first time joining. It's excited to be here. Hey everyone, I'm Rachel Lofton. I'm with Community Partners for Affordable Housing. I believe I was actually on the last one, but we didn't do introductions then, so. Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Havner, the Housing Recovery Director for the Long-Term Recovery Group in Southern Oregon, and I'm joining this call for the first time. Um, it was forwarded to me, and I look forward to learning some of the information shared here. Thank you. I'm Denise Bray, and with Guild Mortgage, and this is my first call, and I'm excited to hear more detail about the programs. Hi there. My name is Carrie Ray. I'm with Diversified Mortgage Group, and we're a division of APMC Mortgage. Just here for the first time, learning about what you guys have available. Hi there. My name is Cassandra Carlson. I'm with Options Financial Residential Mortgage. I'm a mortgage lender, and I'm looking forward to learn a lot. I'm still here. And I'm with LDHS, Oregon Department of Human Services, currently working here in Jackson County. And this is my first time joining this call. Hoping to hear what this what you have to share. Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy Yost. I'm with Neo Home Loans. I've been in the Portland metro area for a long time as a residential lender and just happy to learn about more programs, always trying to help first time home buyers and people get into home ownership. Look forward to hearing about it. Hi everyone, my name is Dave Glavnik. I'm the housing coordinator for Salem for Refugees, a local organization down in Salem. Uh, here first time just to uh, learn and kind of glean from the information. Thank you. Hi 
Hello, my name is Diane Brasher and I'm with Nation Funding. And I'm also here today to learn about your products and excited to be here. Thank you. I am Dan Williams. I'm with Elevate Mortgage. And uh, again, first time, so just excited to hear what there is. Hello there, I'm Pam Hoffine-Hurd, and I am with Pack Res Mortgage in the Eugene area. Just checking it out. Love to hear what you have to say. Any other first time attendees today? Hi everyone, yes. Cheryl with Enact Mortgage Insurance. Um, first time here and actually first serving the Oregon market. So I'm excited to hear uh, information today. I, I'm a first time person here. Um, I'm just, um, I'm a grandfather. I have been involved in construction on many levels for over 50 years and I'm very much interested in really innovative approaches to addressing homelessness. So I'm here to listen and learn. Great, thank you. I just wanna shout, give a shout out to everyone that's here today, our existing partners, our new partners. This is uh, phenomenal and we welcome you to attend every quarter. Since we do have a lot of new first time um, people here today, our partners, new partners, I am gonna call on the OHCS team to introduce themselves just so you are aware of who our homeownership center, or uh, sorry, our homeownership programs team are. And first I'm gonna start with um, our lending team. So Scott, if you would start, and then I see Ryan, so we'll go Scott and Ryan. Scott, you're still on mute. Okay, how's that? No echo, right? Okay, cool, sorry about that. So Scott Shaw, Assistant Director, Homeownership Lending uh, here with uh, OHCS and sit seated across from me. I have Christina Hatton. She is our business development field rep, and Angelica Jimenez, who is our loan specialist. Good afternoon. It's nice to see you all. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Ryan Vandenbrink. I'm the assistant director of homeowner assistance programs at OHCS, and I administer the homeowner assistance fund or half program for homeowners that were financially impacted by the pandemic. Thank you, Ryan. I'm not sure if Rick Abrego is on. Has any... I'm here. Oh, you are. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't see you. I was scrolling through trying to it's see It's okay. So... I'm okay. <laughs> Rick Abrego, uh, Assistant Director of Manufactured Housing, and I uh, manage the um, Manufactured Housing Replacement Program. And I, the reason I wanted to do a shout out to our Assistant Directors is since we do have a lot of first timers, this is the leadership team within the homeownership um, division. And so they can answer questions. We have a lot of lenders on. I know there was a mortgage insurance company on here. so. We can put uh, their contacts in the chat if you'd like to reach out to them directly. I do want to take this opportunity to introduce um, a person newest to the homeownership programs team that happens to be my team. Um, Susie Sandstrom joined our uh, homeownership development team in February. Sorry to Portland Habitat. Um, we did take her from you. We're glad that she has joined our team. So my team is growing and we're putting her to work and it's just great. So I just want to give a shout out to Susie for joining our team. As you can see from the agenda today, we're going to share a lot of information with you. There's going to be a lot of different people um, sharing information with you. 
and specifically around our request for applications. We're going to share where we are on some of them, next steps on some. But what I will ask um, the group is all of these solicitations, with the exception of one, are still what we consider in an open solicitation, meaning that we have not fully executed the grant agreement. So any questions you have would still need to be directed to our, our single point of contact person that was listed on the solicitation. As much as we would love to answer your questions, we're not able to at this time. So I just wanna make sure everyone is aware of that. So we're gonna go ahead and start with some um, things that I think are near and dear to my heart because it's what my team works on the most is some requests for application or RFA. So I'm gonna turn it over um, to Alicia Howe for um, information on down payment assistance and our homeowner ship support services. Good afternoon, Alicia Howell, um, program analyst for the homeownership programs. Um, to share information on our down payment assistance RFA, we had 21 applications um, that we have recently intended to award with over $20 million uh, of funding requests. And we have also reopened the RFA 7279A for culturally responsive organization funding for organizations that did not apply in the first round of applications. Um, the application process is open until March 9th, uh, four o'clock. You need to submit it in to get your funding for that those funds. Um, in addition, the homeownership support services uh, we are still in the review process of those applications and hope to get um, approval of the submitted applications within the next week. And following that, then the intent to award would come from our um, procurement specialist. So that's where we are with those two funding. Great, thank you. And before we move on, there was a question about how much funding. And so we have over um, the total solicitation for our request for our applications for down payment assistance was about $28 million. But since we're reopening, part of that money is included in our reopening. Alicia, I do have my amount, correct, right? So yeah, it was $28 million, the original RFA request. The new one that's reopened is for just over $4 million. Thank you. Okay, now I would like to have Magda share about our language access and targeted outreach solicitation. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Uh, my name is Magda Bejarano, and I am the Partner and Community Access Coordinator for the Home Ownership Division. Uh, this biennium, we had, uh, for the first time, dedicated funds to support language access in home ownership programs and accessibility um, in general, and as well as targeted community outreach. So that solicitation was um, open during the month of December and January, last part of December and January. We received applications um, and we are finalizing the evaluation process. Um, hope to get those grants approved soon so that we can pass on uh, the funds to our community partners that are already doing a great job in making programs accessible. Um, I think is that about um, what I can share about that solicitations. Thanks. Thank you, Magda. And one thing um, that I would like to share, this is the first time that we have put out and received actually this type of funding. And so our um, team of Magda and another person soon to be hired will um, make up our racial disparities section team within the home ownership division. And so you will in the future be seeing additional solicitations and additional opportunities to work on access to home ownership. Um, Magda is a, a, here about a year in our team. And so it's just, she's spent time learning about all of our programs, meeting with some of our partners. And so we're really just developing what we're doing in this realm. And then we have lots of things on our agenda plan. Um, we just need to add a little bit of capacity to help with, um, with the work and then look for partners to have some more engagement um, you know, later this year around 
um, next time funding opportunities and what we can look at um, in the future. So thank you with that. Um, I want I want to get through everything and then I'll come back to questions because I see the chat is is um, full of questions, which I love, but I don't want anyone to think that we're not um, that we won't address those. Rick, you want to um, share some information about your solicitation? Uh, in our homeowner counseling? Yeah, um, that is solicitation has been closed and um, uh, that program basically is um, assisting with our uh, manufactured, manufactured, excuse me, manufactured housing replacement program uh, applicants in the process of replacing their pre-1995 homes. And uh, what they'll receive is Part of that uh, process is receiving home ownership counseling um, on the manufactured homes and uh, uh, assisting with uh, just different types of of uh, financial information, preparing them for their if they need a a first trust deed on the property or if they have a um, if it's being placed on 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 land of their own or if they need financing additional financing other than the amount of money that we're providing as a grant loan and uh, so allows them to just kind of look at the uh, entire the whole aspect of financing in general to um, make sure that they have a, a, a better and clearer picture of what they're getting involved with um, and that uh, I believe will be a, uh, I think I'll be announced pretty quick here as far as who who was awarded the, the, that particular program. Great. Thank you Rick. Mm -hmm. Um, now I want to work, uh, move on to homeownership program updates. So these are existing programs that we are currently working on or existing solicitations that are closed and we can share some information. So uh, first up, Alicia, for the training and technical assistance. So anyone that was previously awarded in the RFA for the training and technical assistance funding for the DEI consultant, we wanted to, you should have received an email yesterday, but just to clarify that we need your updated application with your course, the courses that you are intending on taking, and then your DEI uh, consultant that you're planning on using. If you did not already submit this information, this needs to be turned in to us by March 31st. And also to share that we have extended the performance period for using the training funds and for taking the courses through December 31st. We know there's been a challenge with setting up your classes and uh, things like that. So we want to make sure that everybody has time to expend those funds. So you have until December 31st to um, take your training and complete your DEI consultation services. And uh, once we receive your updated application, uh, the agreements will be processed and then they'll go out to you. We are currently working on the ones that have already submitted their uh, courses and consulted. Those should be out in the next week or so. Perfect. Thank you. Kelly, yeah. On homeownership development. Great. Thanks, Kim. Um, so mo many of you know that the applications for the homeownership development NOFA are due tomorrow. Um, and for tribal applicants, they're due March 17th. Uh, we we'll be writing some new, or we have written some temporary rules for our new homeownership development incubator program, but we need to make them permanent. So now once you have your applications in, we'll be sending out an email to many of you um, to get some feedback on those rules to make sure that they're working for you and make sense for the program. Uh, so just be on the lookout for that. And I'll also post the link in the chat in a second. Um, and then last, we're having a quarterly partner call just for the homeownership development topic on April 11th. Um, and I can put the registration link in the chat for that. And our plan is to discuss the NOFA application and just hear feedback while it's fresh on your mind, as well as MWES 
B requirements for homeownership development. That's a um, something that we are taking under homeownership development now, separate from affordable rental housing. So have some flexibility and want to hear your feedback around those requirements. So I'll put those two links in the chat. Thanks. Thank you, Talia. Ryan, to give us a half update. Thanks, Kim. Uh, HALF is the Homeowner Assistance Fund, uh, which is a federally funded program run through the US Treasury and OHCS. It helps homeowners who have been uh, impacted by the pandemic recover. HALF has been paused to new applications since the 30th of November, although we have accepted applications during that time from homeowners who are in active foreclosure. Um, we plan to reopen to new applications on the 8th of March, so next Wednesday, and we'll open to homeowners who are in active foreclosure, those who have received a certificate of compliance from the Oregon Foreclosure Avoidance Program, which is the certificate that allows them, uh, mortgage servicer, to proceed to foreclosure. Uh, we'll be accepting applications from elderly, disabled, uh, rural BIPOC and limited English proficiency homeowners. Uh, if the homeowners have already submitted an application and been withdrawn for um, a variety of reasons, we will be accepting one additional application from those homeowners and they'll be working with the housing counselor uh, to help them with the application. Our program provides assistance in two ways. One is a reinstatement or past due and we provide up to $50,000 for a homeowner to become current on their mortgage or other housing costs. The other program is one where the terms are changing when we reopen. We provide ongoing payment assistance to low-income homeowners, uh, and we used to offer two different programs for ongoing assistance. Um, and when we reopen, we'll only be offering one program and that will be up to six months of assistance or $10,000 per household. Uh, and it will still be for low income households that are 100% AMI or below. When we reopen, we project that we'll have about $34 million left to assist homeowners uh, in Oregon. And that assistance is provided as a five year forgivable loan, so no interest, no payments. And that is the update for half. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Let's take... Um... Kim, do you want... Uh, there is a question. Do you want me to answer that now or at the end? Or maybe connect with Sonia off, offline? Um, no, we can take it now. We're, um, I was taking a pause. I was looking to see if Alexander Ring has joined. And I know um, for those, if our, our partners, but for those on the call, our agency is um, has been in the legislature this week, all afternoon, every afternoon this week, um, talking about our agency request budget. And so I know our government affairs team is right there with um, our director, Bell and our deputy director, um, Caleb Yance. So she's going to join shortly. So let's, yes, let's please take a question and then we can pause a little bit and make sure we've got the questions in the chat answered as well. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, my camera doesn't seem to want to log on. Um, but Ryan, I wanted to get clarification. Um, can people apply for forward payments? only if they are current on this reopening or not um, and then also can people be behind just uh, one month or do they have to be behind 90 days in order to apply? Uh, so we have revised the program terms to try and be more equitable and to try to help things move along as we get further and further out from the original pandemic experience. Um, and also with a view toward audit. So we are trying to make things easier. We're trying to make sure there are, there are funds for more homeowners. Um, but to answer your two specific questions, homeowners can apply if they're current and they can apply and receive reinstatement or pass due assistance if they're not 90 days behind. 
Thank you. Brian, was that the question in the chat or is there another one? Uh, I did not see that one. Okay. I, no, I just, I, I, see, I see them in the chat, but I haven't been following them. So I'm not sure um, if we have some unop unopened. How about some unanswered questions in the chat? I don't see any regarding half, Kim. Okay. And I've been responding to the people that are asking about RFA 7385. Right, seven, so 7385 is our um, new um, lender approval. So again, any questions coming in specifically to any open solicitations, I will remind everyone that those questions have to be directed to the single point of contact that is listed on that solicitation. And the reason for that is this way we can one, document all questions that are coming in about our solicitations the single point of contact person is our um, procurement specialist that is assigned to these solicitations who track all the questions. They work with the program staff to answer them. And then the questions and answers are posted on the website in the same location as where the solicitations are. So we'll have information about the solicitations and any um, questions and answers if there's been any um, like a RFA, a request for application, like kickoff meeting that we've had to go over the solicitation, that recording is posted with each of our solicitations. So if there's any information that, um, you know, if you weren't able to attend those, the recordings are posted there. So you have additional opportunity to, to um, find out more information. Yeah, with, there is, there is oh, one ahead. question, there is one question, but it's more of a discussion. From Craig okay. Patterson, is anyone or agency addressing the extreme increasing home prices? Is there any end in sight to the over the top greed that drives prices to be extreme? That is a constant, I think, conversation here internally at OHCS. I know we have several um, of our home ownership development partners on this call, and they work diligently about, about developing and building affordable homes. Um, I'm not sure what the answer is, but it is an ongoing conversation that that this team and I think everyone within OHCS feels, you know, the, the push point or the price of homes is really pushing, you know, first time home buyers and a lot of people out of the market. So um, it's a continuous conversation. I know it's a a topic of conversation in the legislature as well as we are talking about additional funding to continue to build affordable homes. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Alexander Ring, who is our government relations um, director for home ownership. And so I'm going to turn it over to her to share some information about our governor's recommended budget. And thank you for joining us. I know your day is probably extremely busy. I'm not seeing her on here, Kim. Did she notify you that she's here? I'm not seeing her Sorry? Let me know. Yeah. Oh, she's on the phone. <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect. I've got audio coming out of my phone and video somewhere else. Um, I am here in Capitol today because it is the fourth and final day of our budget hearings. It is public testimony. Um, so it is a very exciting time for us. Um, I'll just talk about the budget in terms of the home ownership investments we're seeing. Um, so first and kind of largest of all of the investments we're seeing um, is $154 million in list. So those would be Article 11Q general obligation bonds. That is the most we've ever seen. Um, and that's a really incredible investment that the governor has put forward. Um, we are also seeing 5 million in um, general fund to be paired with list. Um, there has been some kind of confusion because it showed up in some of the documentation as uh, 5 million for CLTs. How it actually shows up in the budget is, is paired with list. 
Um, and then additionally, you'll find 13.6 million in down payment assistance associated with OHCS lending products. So that would be flex lending and the Oregon Residential Bond Loan Program. And then last but not least is $4.5 million for the Manufactured Home Replacement Program, um, which very excitingly is almost entirely slash is spent down. And we're seeing a lot of legislative interest in that one, especially. I am happy to answer any kind of questions that y'all may have. Hi, Alexander. I heard you on a uh, <clears throat> committee uh, hearing call this just this morning on an important bill that came out of JARDO, uh, or actually, yeah, it, it's, it's another related bill. But um, Alexander, how does these, now you said 154 million for Lyft, which is awesome. Um, is there a, a committed or specific set aside for home ownership in that in that amount yet? That that is just the home ownership set aside. The That's whole just number I think is nine hundred million in wow. Article Eleven Q bonds or OHCS. Yeah. So that is just the home ownership set aside. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And and the five million that's paired. Um, how does that compare to what we had this year? Um, and there is confusion so about what it's set aside for. Yeah, so um, I believe this session we had about 13.5 set aside or um, in, in dollars compared with Lyft. Um, so it is, it is, you know, less. It, you know, um, will definitely be harder to pair, but we look forward to the challenge. There's a question here. Am I referring to the support service? Not sure, um, but I am curious about how it compares to what we're dealing with this year. But if we're talking about, I mean, we've had 80 million with, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, 20% set aside. So this is a huge increase um, in lift. It's just that a lift, again, lift is limited to the value of the land, right? Based on appraisal. So we've been kind of trying to figure out how to, maybe there's a creative workaround about this because we can only get what the, what the land is valued at, right, for, for a lot. And that's why the, the match was important. So I'm curious about how, what, what we can do to help um, make this work uh, for, for new, new development. Thank you, Diane. Other questions? And I think Diane, just to kind of answer your question, I think that is a conversation that we will continue to have with our our stakeholders and partners. Like, how do we how do we make this work, right? As um, you know, as we work through Lyft and the many opportunities that it provides, there are still challenges, and we know that, and we'll continue to work the to the best of our ability to work through those. Um, Again, it's going to be a collaborative between our partners and us to determine how we can best do that. So, Sonia. Yeah, I just wanted to echo what Diane was saying. We were at uh, the Housing for All meeting this last Monday, which is the Central Oregon Consortium uh, on Housing. And that concerned about the match amount. Yeah, I'm super excited about the investments that are going forward, but that's just concerned on the match amounts and the, the effect that that may have on projects and whether there was possibilities to increase some of those uh, machine funds so that um, there's a little bit less challenges in deploying the more restricted funds was something that was echoing through our conversations as well. So. Great, thank you. Other questions for Alexandra? I know several of our partners advocates have been providing um, public testimony either in person or have submitted information in writing. So we do thank you for your support for our budget as well. Um, so I just wanna call out that I know um, our partners and advocates are as busy probably as we are at the Capitol these days and just appreciate all the work that that goes into um, 
um, the session and the in the bill reviews and working with legislators and staff, it it is it is a lot of work, but it's very appreciative um, all around, right? And we hope for the best outcomes for um, approval of our budget moving forward and and putting these dollars to work. So, Alexandra, do you have anything else to share? You may need to jump off, so I just want to make sure that you have an opportunity to share anything else. Oh, yeah. I really think, I mean, not much. It's been wonderful to see so many people both virtually and in person today. Um, I've seen Diane many times at this point today. <laughs> um, and I got to see Shannon in person, which is absolutely fantastic. I know she's not on right now, but um, it's been so wonderful to see so many people. Um, next step for our budget is we'll get the LFO recommended budget and it'll move through at least in the meeting. Um, our final public hearing has wrapped up. So that's all she wrote for the budget, guys. Thank you guys so much. And I'm going to hop off. Have a good day, folks. Great, thank you. All right, so let's uh, pause. I'm gonna go back to questions. Do we have some questions that need um, answered or we're doing pretty good? The chat has been um, kept up with, but the, okay. Craig responded back to you, how do you define an affordable home? Specifically, hey, do we have a definition or is this an external definition? Well, I think there's probably lots of conversation around what is affordable as far as price-wise. There's definitely affordability around income. A lot of our partners work with potential home buyers that are 80% um, of the area and median income, 60%. Um, some 30%, it really depends on their model. Um, a lot of them who are our partners in affordable home ownership development, it is a very, I'm gonna take a word from Diane, a very layered process, right? There is the development piece that they develop the properties, but there's many um, funding sources that go into development for the homes to have them remain affordable for home buyers. There's also down payment assistance funds that come into play for the home buyers as well to again help them to have the lowest mortgage payments possible with um, that opportunity. I, there's many, our partners um, work magic at times because they are constantly looking for many funding opportunities. So you've heard us talk a lot about lift funding opportunities today. Some of our partners work with other jurisdictions, other cities or counties to look at their funding. So potentially they may match, you know, I'm just gonna use the city of Portland funding with some of our lift funding. They could use funding in other areas. We have partners that cover the state. So there could be other resources in local jurisdictions that they can um, pair the funding with. So it is, and they work with financial institutions for construction loans. So there's just many, many facets that go into making a development work. But then there's as many opportunities, again, to ensure that the homeowner as an affordable home, but more importantly, a sustainable home so that they remain a home buyer, a homeowner for many years, not just, we're not just happy to put them in a home, we want them to be sustainable in their home as well. And our partners do a fabulous job of, with that. Our home buyers receive home buyer education, which is a valuable tool, again, to ensure that they have the financial resources to maintain their budget as far as their housing expense, food, utilities, you know, clothing, everything that goes in our monthly budgets. Our partners work with our home buyers to ensure that they have the ability um, to meet those. And then also to plan for repairs and maintenance that we all know that comes with, with owning a home, whether that's a manufactured home, a site built home, any place you, you know, that you do own, there is that maintenance that, that comes. And so they do work really close with um, our potential home buyers to ensure 
sustainability as well. So, and I would welcome any partners to either help me echo what I've had to say. If you have some other thoughts, I'm really, really help, really happy to share the floor with any of you on this conversation. Greg has his hand up. Yeah, yeah, if I may follow up for a minute. I think there's an elephant in the living room that we're not looking at. Let me illustrate. A friend of mine, I live in McKinsey Bridge, Oregon, have for 49 years. A friend of mine just sold a piece of a property with a house, an acre, essentially an acre of ground overlooking the McKinsey. So it had, had a view shed that was spectacular, but he bought it in 59 in, in 95 for $159,000. He sold it last year for $759,000. When I first came to Oregon in 1971, I bought two and a half acres in Lorraine, Oregon with a partner for $7,500. The prices are so extreme that if we don't address this, we will be like the little boy putting his, his thumb in the, in the crack in the dam while the dam is about to collapse. You know, somehow this has got to be addressed. It's above my pay grade to know how, but, you know, can you imagine being a young family with a $759,000 mortgage? You know, all the assistance in the world's not gonna solve that problem. So how, how do we address that is my question. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Diane. I'll take a step at that, Craig. We're all here because of the incredible um, increase in prices um, that have priced all kinds of people out. And there's been egregious policies uh, of all kinds that have really left people of color out um, and that's one of the reasons we target um, or prioritize Black, Indigenous, people of color, because they've even had a much tougher go, and that's illustrated by, by the stats and you know, the racial disparity. So it's even worse than what you're saying. And uh, when I think a, a lot of us really work hard to bring um, you know, gap funding to serve working families. And in our case, we hold those homes permanently affordable for all time. They're off that open market once and for all. Um, and that's why we work with the state and federal government, local governments to bring in as much resources as we can to fill the gap for working families, the exact people you're talking about. Um, now things have, you know, inflation's calmed down a little bit, interest rates have gone up, prices have still, have still gone up, but this is the extraordinary um, challenge we're all facing. And on top of it, we have, a, we've, we have underbuilt units in the state of Oregon, really the whole West Coast for now decades. So we're, you know, hundreds of thousands of units behind in terms of inventory, which also drives prices up. Um, so I hope that helps, but we're, that's what we're all here to try to, challenge, uh, that, try to address. Thank you, Diane. Um, we have about 10 minutes left, but we do have um, uh, a little bit of a topic about what we're gonna cover in June. And so I wanna turn it over to Talia to, to um, share what we talked about in December and what our next steps are at our June homeownership partner meeting. Talia. Thanks, Kim. And I think this, uh, the past conversation really dovetails nicely with this is um, our, we've been trying to spur this conversation with you all around how might we collectively build a safety net that supports people to buy, maintain and build equity in their homes. And so um, last, uh, meeting in December, we spoke about uh, the different safety net pillars that, that many of you came up with, uh, stabilizing families, building knowledge, home purchase support, maintaining homes, and preventing foreclosure. And you all split up into different groups and came up with some ideas that were important to you around uh, your safety net pillar. So just few of the ideas that we heard were ensuring capacity to hire bilingual staff, funding with no strings attached, um, include diverse partners and their clients to shape the programs that are for them, 
uh, offer new opportunities for lenders to participate in OHCS programs, include home repair funds, uh, continue, ensure the continuation of foreclosure assistance, and then overall people were interested in continuing this safety net conversation and just really diving into their particular um, subject matter area that they spend their days thinking about. Um, and so, so having more conversation about that. So we plan to dive in a little more at the June meeting, which is the next quarterly partner meeting. Um, if you have any thoughts on how you want to continue the conversation, I know you've already, some of you have already given us some thoughts, or if you're interested in helping facilitate that, let us know. Um, but just know that that's a conversation we want to keep on having. I'll just follow up that um, the information um, and the recording of that of our meeting in December is on the website, but the individual breakout sessions is not we're not we don't have the ability to record that, but we did take notes in every session. And so that information is posted um, on our website where our technical advisories are posted. And so if you weren't able to attend the December meeting, feel free to take a look at the notes that we captured from every one of our um, breakout sessions. It was a recap, it also listed whom the partners were that participated in those conversations. And then um, to continue the conversation, we are dedicating our full June meeting. I mean, we may have a few announcements, but everyone asked to have longer conversations around these safety net um, topics. And so we wanna give as much time as possible to have those conversations and then gather more notes, have more participation, and then, you know, again, continue these uh, conversations. And um, next, I would like to invite any partners, if you have any announcements, any upcoming events or anything that you would like to share with this group, I would like you to have the opportunity to share any announcements that may be happening in either in, in your area or with your agency. I'll give you the floor for to share. Sonia. Yeah. Uh, so if March 16 and then on April 17, uh, we are co-hosting a collaborative event with the affordable housing developers from Central Oregon. And then they were in fact, we are doing an affordable housing fair where people that are interested in uh, hearing more about any and all of the affordable housing development programs and how to start your path towards home ownership, they can come and attend. There will be a short presentation from, from each of them. Um, and then we have some tables at the event where some of the local lenders are um, being invited to have information on, on, on specifically related to first-time home buyer products. Uh, so we're super excited. This is the first time that we're putting an event like this and it's um, uh, really looking forward to, uh, to having it. So. Thank you, Sonia. Other announcements? Well, Kim, <laughs> I wasn't going to bring this up, but I think I will. <laughs> oh my um, God. I, I just since we have a minute and we're trying to get the word out here uh, to and many of you hopefully already saw an announcement from our end that um, I'm, I'm going to be retiring from my position as of September 1. Um, and we're going to be looking for a new executive director for Proud Ground. The search will be conducted by uh, nonprofit professionals now and PN. So please keep your ears and eyes open uh, for people that might be interested. And um, I'm gonna be around for the next six months and excited about that and not going away, but um, uh, we'll, we'll have some leadership changes at Proud Ground in the coming year, within the year. Wow, that was a surprise. I didn't see that coming. So I know um, some of our executive directors in our community action agencies have been retiring and have some new um, change in leadership as well. So it must be must be in the air. I'll just say that it must be in the air, huh? Well, 
well, great. I, I'm sure you may retire from one position, but I'm sure you will be around. You're not going anywhere if I know you, so we're grateful. But I'm sure someone will snatch you up or you can do some consulting or many things that, or maybe just enjoy life for a while, right? <laughs> Great. Well, a couple of things I just want to share before we um, we do uh, let you all go back to your afternoon. How you did um, mention one of our next opportunities is our home ownership development partner call on April 11th from two to three. She did put the link in uh, the chat. So this is you know for our home ownership development partners. But again, these are open meetings. So feel free to attend. We are gonna talk about the NOFA and really get some, um, receive some feedback on our MWESB, which is Minority Women and Emerging Small Business. We have a tendency to use a lot of acronyms. So I wanna make sure everyone knows exactly what we are um, speaking about. Our next home ownership partner call will be June 1st. And again, that's where we're going to dedicate most of that time to our safety net conversation. And I believe uh, Talia, I know there's a bunch of chat. If people have comments to go, uh, thoughts around that meeting, send them directly to you. Was that the, is that what I saw in the chat? I just wanna make sure I'm not speaking out of turn. Yeah, I put my email in there so people can okay. email me. Great, thank you. And then um, our next meeting is September 7th and December 7th. And again, all of these um, notices of any time we're getting together like this uh, are posted um, on our website. Um, I've encouraged, and the link is in there to sign up for e-news. Again, sign up for any and all information that you would love to see from the agency. You know, we have a director's message, procurement, home ownership, affordable rental. I think there's a few other uh, opportunities to select. Um, tomorrow is our um, monthly housing stability council meeting. And again, those are open to uh, the public, but we give information about, you know, what's happening, if we need, um, you know, policy decisions from our council members. Tomorrow I am excited to share that we have an, our Oregon Bond Residential Loan Program 2022 highlights. We will be um, honoring our top lender, which is Guild Mortgage again. So yay to Guild Mortgage. I know there's a couple Guild um, Mortgage people on staff are here today. And our top loan officer is also with uh, Guild Mortgage is Vince Kingston. And then Alicia will be uh, sharing information about our down payment assistance awards from the first round of the solicitation, right? Remember, we still have 7279A. I had to look at the number because we have a, have a lot of solicitations. That one's specifically still open. So the information that she's sharing tomorrow are the awards that have already been approved by our executive director, Andrea Bell. And we share the information with Housing Stability Council and our community to know whom has you know, received down payment assistance funds and um, just to showcase the work that they're doing as well. And with that, uh, we have about three minutes. Any final words from either any OHCS staff that we didn't cover that you feel like we need to share with the group before we say goodbye to everyone? Sorry, it looks like the sun is trying to shine in on my room here. Seven three seven nine eight. There was a question about the due date. It's it is March 9th. Okay. So that is the due date that your application does need to be submitted by the closing time that is listed in the solicitation. Okay. 